shall rejoice, we shall be glad in it. Please let me know where you could be watching uh, from. Let me know where you are watching us from in Jesus' name. Welcome, welcome on board. Welcome, welcome on board. Welcome on board. Welcome in Jesus' name. Glow Karabadiala Zagatayanda. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Rako Zadamayando Lobradiala Zagata. Welcome, welcome on board. I want to invite, invite, invite all of us. Yes, yes, in Jesus' name. Welcome on board. I would love to know where you could be watching me from in Jesus' name. Where are you watching me from? Welcome, welcome on board in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome on board. Yes, this is a day that the Lord has made. We shall, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, in Jesus' name. Oh yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus is Lord. Yes, in Jesus' name. Please invite somebody, invite somebody, invite somebody. Invite somebody in Jesus' mighty name. Bless all of us that are coming on board. Let me know where you could be watching us from in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, thank you. Welcome on board all of us that are online, whatever time it is, whatever time it is. I really love to know where you could be watching me from as we have our time in the presence of God. I call this word fest. Yes, let us feast on the word of God. Yes, this is a word feasting time. Yes, please let me know where you are. Sandra Kims Nakuru, invite two more people, Sandra. Tell them we are live on word feast. Oh yes, in Jesus' mighty name, how is Nakuru? How is Nakuru? God bless you. This is Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. We are right here in Nairobi. Yes, for those who are new, who are not even aware, we are already in Nairobi. This is Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. God bless you, Jen. Aha, God bless you very much. Invite one or two people. We'll be sharing on what I call financial limitations. This is one of the areas every man, every woman is crying, shedding tears because of financial limitations. Yes, everyone is crying, crying, crying. There is no money. Well, what shall we do? Businesses are collapsing. Yes, there is no money. What do we do? I would want us to be looking some of the solutions some of the solutions that are in the word of God, because every challenge in life, every challenge in life, there is always a solution. Please invite some, somebody, invite somebody, somebody somewhere, tell them, oh yes, tell them we are live right now in Jesus' name on Word Fest. Oh yes, in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, invite somebody, tell them Dr. Oracle is online. Dr. Oracle is online in Jesus' name. Yes, I'm still waiting for you on board in Jesus' name. Press the button, share, like, invite in Jesus' mighty name. Oh yes, why? Why is there so much cry on money, money, money is failing? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about money? What does the Bible say about money? That is what we need to know. What does God say when life becomes unbearable? When life becomes unbearable, you can't afford house rent. You can't afford anything. Oh, yes. You can't afford anything. So it is always important. Thank you. God bless 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 you. Yes, invite somebody. Tell them, tell them we are alive. We are alive in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord richly, 
richly bless you. The Lord richly, richly bless you, those who are coming on board. And I also challenged you, if you don't have this mug, please, please, please get this oracle mug. Yes, you can serve your husband, your wife. Yes, a glass of cold water, a glass of uh, tea or a cup of tea from this mug. Yes. Oh, yes, you can talk to us. We'll send one of these mugs wherever you could be. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, keep, keep, keep tuning in. Keep tuning in. I want to know those who are online. We are all, we are all on our social media platform. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh yes, welcome, welcome, welcome on board. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, just looking forward to seeing as many of you online. We are on all our social media platform, Reverend Dr. Francis Oracle. We are also on Oracle Television Network, Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. We are also on the platform on Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nakuru, Kenya. So those who are in Nakuru, you can watch us on that platform. Oracle TV, we are also live. We are also live. The Lord richly, richly, richly bless you. I decree the blessings that make rich adding no sorrows into our lives. Let the Holy Spirit, yes, demystify the mysteries, the mysteries of the word into our hearts, into our spirit. Let the purposes, the plan of God for our lives be uh, exposed, yes, simplified in a way we are going to understand in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree the blessings that make rich adding no sorrows in the name of Jesus. Enjoy the word first in Jesus' mighty name. Karibu sana, karibu sana. The Lord richly bless you. Thank you. God bless you. There are a number of things we are going to be looking at and get to understand what is my part in the plan of God for prosperity. If I need to know what God is saying, yes, I need, I need to understand the plan and the purposes of God in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. God bless you. I'm still seeing people coming online. People are still joining in. Yes, Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nakuru Karibuni Sana. Welcome, welcome on board in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord richly, richly bless you. We are going to start by reading Genesis chapter 47 verse 15. Genesis chapter number 47, I'm reading verse 15. Yes, follow me, follow me very, very closely in Jesus' mighty name. This is what the Bible says. And when money failed, and when money failed, when money failed in the land of Egypt. That's a very strange statement. That is a very strange statement that you cannot underestimate the consequences of this kind of a statement. And when money failed in the land of Egypt. When money failed in the land of Egypt. So there are a time money fails in every nation. There are seasons money can fail. When we talk about money failing, we are talking about inflation, high cost of living, high cost of living. Everyone can feel the pinch of the cost of living, whether it is petroleum products, whether it is food, whether it, whatever it is, you are feeling the pinch of the high cost living. And this never happened only once in the Bible. A number of times we see this kind of a scenario that we are experiencing in the world today. Yes, we are experiencing what the children of Israel were experiencing. Yes, and that is where we are looking at financial limitation. The Bible says when money failed in the land of Egypt, 
when money failed in the land of Egypt. That is an opening, uh, an open, an open, yes, yes, revelation that money can fail. Money can fail. And what does that uh, tell us? When money fails, it means things become unaffordable. Life becomes unbearable. So there are times we say money has failed. So when money fails, it is a sign people are not able to bear the high cost of living. The high cost of living. So Egypt is an example as a superpower during those days. Money failed in the land of Egypt and money failed in the land of Canaan. So these two nations were hit so badly by inflation. Everything disappeared. Every commodity in the market disappeared. You could not buy anything, even if you had money, even your money, God finished. These are two nations that suffered terrible, terrible inflation. The Bible says money failed in the land of Egypt and money failed in the land of Canaan. When we are talking about Canaan, we are talking about a land flowing with milk and honey. Money failed. It was a good land. It was a large land even from the testimonies of what we we'll read about it in Exodus. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. But people from Canaan, people from Canaan also traveled to Egypt. Listen, and all the Egyptians came unto Joseph. All the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread. Why should we die in your presence? For money is a failing. Money has failed. What that statement means, money has no value. A hundred shilling has no value. Fifty bob has no value. Money is a failing. Grato by Azalika Yananai. What the writer is saying here, all the children, all, all those who are in Egypt, they were crying to Joseph. Just like the way people are crying to the president now. People are crying to the leaders. There are bills that are supposed to be passed in parliament. Yes, to increase taxes on people. That tells you money will fail. Money will fail. You will have a hundred shilling in your pocket that cannot buy anything for you. You will have 50 shillings in your pocket that cannot buy you anything. That's what I'm talking about. Money failed in the land of Egypt. Money lost value in the land of Egypt. Money could not buy anything in the land of Egypt. That is what you need to know where you are. And what is the plan of God for escape? How do I escape famine? How do I escape the times that we are living in? Listen and listen and listen to me very well. And money failed in the land of Egypt. Money failed in the land of Canaan. And all the Egyptians, they came unto Joseph. Even the Canaanites, they came to Joseph seeking for help. Inflation, the commodities are too expensive. Uh, give us bread for why should we die in thy presence? For the money fails. The economy, the burden is too heavy. Grato by And this one does not exempt anyone. Believers are included. Non-believers are included. The faithful in faith. They are feeling the pinch of this hardship. Oh yes. Listen and listen to this. Money failed in the land of Egypt. So money is also failing in many countries in the world. Yes, whether it's a superpower, whether it is Europe, America, China, they can feel the pain of inflation. The dollar against the euro, the euro is against the currencies in Africa. So there is a competition of currencies. Why? 
because other currencies will be suffocated and lose value. But you and I, we must understand God's system of breaking the limitation. God's way of breaking this limitation. I want us to jump all the way to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. I want you to see a story uh, of a desperate woman that ran to the prophet of God seeking for assistance and help. Listen to this. Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. There cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha. Yes, unto Elisha, saying, My servant, I mean, your servant, my husband is dead. My husband, your servant is dead. That is your servant, my husband is dead and is a prophet. And you know that your servant did fear the Lord. But the creditor, the bank, the bank, the bank is already here. And they have come to take up my two sons to be bondmen. Listen and listen to this. Life was too hard for this prophet until he went to take a loan. He went to take a loan. Oh, this is very strange. This is a woman whose husband was a prophet. And the Bible says, he cried to Elisha and said, Now life is too difficult here. You know, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Yes, he feared the Lord, but the bank has already come. The bank, the creditor, yes, the auctioneers are with us here. They have come to take my two sons as bondmen. Why? Because my husband, who is your servant, wrote my children as collateral. Yes, he took a loan and said, if I'm not able to pay, you can take my two sons. I may be talking to somebody right now. You took a loan with your logbook. You took a loan with your logbook and now the car is just about to be auctioned. They are just about to take the, uh, the car. You took the car on a loan in a bank. So many people right now as I'm talking to you, we are wrestling. We are wrestling with the debts. We are wrestling with the debts, and many of us don't know the way of escape. We don't know the way of escape. Yes, but we'll be looking at a number of areas that will help us know how we can escape this inflation. Because it does not, it didn't happen once in the Bible. It happened many times, and men and women were able to be sustained by the Almighty God. Yes, not once, not twice, not thrice. There was inflation. There was famine in the land. People struggled to buy food. People struggled to survive. Even in some instances in Samaria, people were eating donkey's head. Donkey's head because of the famine. So it's a matter of understanding what is the way of escape when it comes to matters of financial limitation. We are not able to afford anything. We are not able to meet our needs on a regular basis or our daily needs. Genesis chapter 26. In Genesis 26, we see a scenario of the same kind where people suffer famine is not only in Egypt, is not only in Canaan. This, in, uh, this country where Isaac was a stranger also was struck by famine. The Bible says, and there was famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. So Isaac is experiencing famine just the way his father Abraham experienced famine. 
and the step that he took was Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. He decided now we can't die of famine. We have to journey all the way and seek for help to the king of the Philistines. That was uh, Abimelech. Listen and listen to this. Why this boy, this young man called Isaac was planning to relocate. The Bible says the Lord appeared to him and he said, don't go down to Egypt. Don't go down to Egypt. Do not. Go not down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell you of. Dwell in the land that I shall tell you. So John, verse 3, so John in this land, I will be with you. That is what I want you to understand right now. Yes, you may want to relocate because times are tough. But in this particular case, God spoke to Isaac and said, you cannot relocate because your father decided to relocate because of the famine. But I don't want you to relocate. Stay in the land. Stay in the land and I will be with you. My greatest question to somebody watching me, before you decide to relocate, what you need is the presence of God with you. What you require to understand is God with me during this famine. That will be your defining moment to know whether I will be blessed or whether I will struggle like any other personality. Listen, the Bible says, God spoke to him and said, you cannot use your father's methods. Your father relocated. Yes, because there was famine, just like in the days of your father. So don't do what your father did. Do not relocate. In this scripture, we see him saying, dwell in the land. Don't go down to Egypt. So journey in the land and I will be with you. Number two and will bless you for unto you and to your seed i will give all these countries and i'll perform the oath which i swore unto abraham your father listen and listen to this which i swore unto your father abraham verse number four and i will make your seed I will make thy seed to multiply like the stars in heaven and will give unto thee thy seed and your seed these countries and your seed shall be all, uh -huh, shall all the nation be, be blessed on earth. In other words, I'll use you to bless all the nations of the earth through your seed. Just as Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments and my status and law. Verse number 6 is where I want us to look at 6 and verse number 12. Verse 6 and verse 12, the Bible says, Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Don't change your position. Let God bless you right where you are. You are planning to close your business. You are planning to relocate your business. I hear the Lord say, dwell in the land stay in the land i want to favor you like no one's business i want to favor your work i want to favor the work of your hands this hour i hear the lord say to this woman you will not quit the race because times are hard you will not quit because the economy the inflation taxation is too high you cannot quit the race i am speaking to you right now things may look like they may not change but i'm here to tell you that days ahead are better than the days behind may jehovah visit you this hour may heaven visit you with supernatural increase and multiplication. The Bible says, and Isaac dwelt in Gerar. He was warned by God, don't go down to Egypt. What does going down to Egypt mean? It means don't adapt the systems of the world to, uh -huh, 
change your scenario. Wait upon the Lord because God will bless you right here in Kenya. God will bless you right where you are in that city. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Whatever it takes, God has to visit your life. So he dwelt in the land. He dwelt in the land. But dwelling in the land did not mean he was idle. It does not mean he was idle. Verse number 12. He took a step. He took a step. Listen to me. There is famine, but Isaac took a step in verse number 12. He took a step that many of us will not want to take. He took a step that many of us will not want to take. The Bible says, then Isaac sowed in the land. How do you explain? There is no rain. The economy is bad. Everyone is relocating. But the Lord says, dwell in the land. And the only thing that Isaac could do is to sow in the land. I am challenging. I am challenging somebody. This is not the time to withhold. This is not the time to withhold. This is a time to prove God and tell him, I am releasing my sacrifice to change and break financial limitations. Our Father and our God, we ask, and we are pleading right now. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, show yourself mighty on our behalf in Jesus' name. Grossa Katayan, I want to read you a scripture that will even open your eyes more than you thought in Jesus' name. Isaac sojourned, oh yes, Isaac, Isaac with the hell, I mean, he not with the hold, but he sowed in the land. He did not, yes, uh, uh, abuse the opportunity, that's what I'm saying. He did not abuse Yes, the opportunity given by God. He was told, stay in the land. Stay in the land and I will bless you. Stay in the land and I will bless you. This is where many of us fail. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. Do not, do not attempt to relocate. God is going to release the blessings that is already planning for your life. There are blessings during famine. There are blessings during uh, inflation. There are blessings during lack. And that is what the Lord wants to do. Look at this. And Isaac sold in the land. He sold in the land. How do you sow in a land that is, uh, there is inflation, there are struggles, people are struggling. Yes, yes. Look at that. Isaac sowed in the land. Isaac sowed in the land and received, received the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. Listen and listen to this. This is very, very interesting. Oh my goodness. This is very, very interesting. <laughs> The Bible says he sowed in the land. He sowed in the land. He did not withhold his seed. You don't withhold your seed. You don't withhold. This is not the time to withhold. This is a time of trying and testing God at his word. Yes, I want you to look at Proverbs 11.26. Proverbs 11.26. And this one should open your eyes of understanding. Yeah, that is Proverbs eleven twenty six. The Bible says, He that withhold coin or corn, he that withhold corn, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that sells. It is a time of releasing. Do not withhold your finances. Do not withhold your seed. Don't withhold your seed. Listen and listen to this. The Bible says, He that withholds 
if you withhold your sacrifice, your seed, people will curse you. He that withhold corn, the people shall curse him. So when you are not a giver, curses locate you. Anytime you are not a giver, curses locate you. But he says, he that withhold corn, the people shall curse him. Not even people, even God can curse you. If there is a time men need to realize, this is a time to invest in the kingdom. This is a time to invest in the kingdom. This is a time to tell God, I have this 20,000 shilling. I have kept it. I want to release it into the kingdom business. I have a hundred thousand. I want to sow into the kingdom during inflation. I want to give into the work of the kingdom. Yes, Isaac sowed in the land when there was famine, there was no rain. Oh my goodness, let me read you something interesting. In Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Oh my goodness. Ecclesiastes 11 from verse 1, NLT or Message Bible. I want you to see the dangers of withholding. This is the best time to tell God, I am giving. Listen to this. Be generous. Invest in acts of charity. Charity yields high returns. Zagataya mamamazo. Brataya gariko zonandaya. Yes, I'm talking to you as we read this scripture. Yes, this is where we are, our building, where we want you to sow a sacrifice. I'm talking about Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. Right this building you're seeing here. This is where we meet every Sunday. This is where we are meeting every Sunday. And we are paying a mortgage to own this building. Yes. You, all of you know we are right here on Moranga Road. We are right on Moranga Road, right in uh, this area is called Ngara. If you look at this building where we meet, is a building worth investing your sacrifice. This is where we are located in Nairobi. Tell me, man of God, times are tough, but I want to give my one-time sacrifice of 20,000. I want to send my 1,000 right now. I want to send my 100,000 right now to facilitate the payment of this building. You look at our Sunday services. This is only six months old. We are in this building just six months. Our services are growing tremendously. And I want you to be a partner right now. Right now, I want you to be a partner. We cannot break financial limitation by withholding. You cannot, you cannot prosper in withholding what you are supposed to give out for the kingdom. This is our Sunday service. This is our Sunday service. I want you to tell me, man of God, I want to give my sacrifice right now, right now, right now. Times may be tough, but I'm sending this 1,000 right now. Times are tough, but I'm sending 2,000, 5,000, 20,000. Our pay bill number is right on the screen. I'm waiting to see your sacrifice right now and tell me this is my seed. Yes, times are tough, but this is my sacrifice. My numbers are on the screen. Our pay bill numbers are on the screen. I don't want you to be left out right now. I want you to tell me, man of God, times are tough. But tough people will stand when they stand with the word of God. Our pay bill numbers will be on the screen shortly so that you may tell me, man of God, I want to be a partner, Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi, as we possess this building, as we buy this building together, as we pay the mortgage to the bank together in the name of Jesus. Are you there? Are you watching? Are you a partaker? Are you one 
who is saying, I am sending my sacrifice right now. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Listen to what the writer says here. This is a challenging scripture. Yes, it's a challenging scripture. It talks about you cannot afford to uh, withhold. Yes, be generous. Invest in the acts of charity, uh, acts of love, because charity yields high returns. Do you want high returns? That is what Isaac did. Isaac sowed in the land, and the same year, a hundredfold return. Verse number two, listen to this. This is a challenging time where everyone must be a partaker of this blessing. Don't withhold your goods. Don't withhold your goods. Spread them around. Be a blessing to others. This could be your last day. This could be your last night. I am challenging somebody. This could be your last day on earth. This could be your last day on that business. But you can make it the first day. It could be the last one, but you can make it the first day. Yes, our pay bill numbers will be on the screen. I want you to tell me, man of God, I want to be a partner. I want to be a partner right now. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Get your sacrifice, get your sacrifice. Tell me, man of God, I am tired of inflation. I am tired of this life of lack. I cannot afford anything. I cannot afford anything. You can turn around your life by just one sacrifice in life. If it happened to Isaac, it can happen to you. Verse number 3 of Ecclesiastes 11. Listen to this. And I want you to be paying a lot of attention. Something good must happen to your life. My, 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 my goodness. I am praying. Listen to this. When the clouds are full of water, it will rain. But if your clouds don't have any rain, it cannot. If they are not full of water, it cannot produce for you. If the clouds be full of rain or water, they empty themselves. They will empty themselves. When the wind blows down a tree, it lies where it falls. No one can change that. You can't change that. If a tree falls on the west, it will lie where it fell. But the last portion of this is what I want you to see, verse number four. Yes, listen to this. If you observe the clouds, if you observe the wind, times may hit you the wrong direction. Verse number four, the Bible says, He that observes, don't sit there watching the wind. Do your own work. Don't stare at the clouds. Get on with your life. Start doing something. Do something that will give you returns. Do something that will give you returns. King James says, listen to this. He that observes the wind shall not sow. If you observe the wind, if you observe the economy, you will never be a giver. If you observe how the economy is running, you will never be a giver. Listen to this. He that observes the wind shall not sow. And he that regards the clouds shall not reap. Oh my goodness. Because all of us don't know. Yes, we don't know the way of the spirit. Verse number five. Number six, the Bible says, In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening withhold not your hand. Do not withhold your hand, for you know not which one shall prosper. Go to work in the morning, stick to it until evening without watching the clock. You never know from the moment to moment how your work will turn out in the end. In other words, get busy, get busy, get busy. Yes, it's a time to see where can I sow? Where am I going to sow my sacrifice? Yes, 
Look at this. Our pay bill number is on the screen. I want you to tell me right now, man of God, I want to partner with Oracle Television. I want to partner with Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. I want to partner with Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. Our pay bill number is right there. That is, you partner with us on 413-469. Account is your name. Tell me, times are tough, but I am sending my 1,000. Times are tough, but I'm sending a one-time gift of 20,000. I want to partner with Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. Yes, don't be a spectator. Don't be a spectator. Spectators don't harvest anything. Spectators don't harvest anything. Only participants. That is why the Bible says, Work hard, work hard, get on with the work in Jesus' mighty name. 4130469, account, write me your name as I pray with you. I want to mention your name, yes, in the name of Jesus. Where could you be watching me from? Don't just be a spectator. It can be your turning point. Isaac showed in the land in the worst times. Isaac showed in the land in the worst times of life. When there was famine, he decided, I relocate. But God said, you cannot relocate. You cannot change your business. You cannot apply another job. I want to bless you right where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is why it is important to study the word of God and understand what really, really happened in the days of famine. Because famine never came once in the Bible. There are many times the Bible or the Bible talks about famine. Bible talks about people undergoing terrible famine. In, uh, that is 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. Oh yes, but we can look at chapter 17. We begin 1 Kings chapter 17. Listen and listen to this. Yes, this is a man called Elijah the Tishbite. I want to show you times can be hard. And that's why money failed in Egypt, money failed in Canaan, and people were crying to Joseph asking for food. Elijah the Tishbite, uh -huh, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, Say to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. But according to my word. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, oh yes, get thee hence and turn eastward and hide yourself, brook cherith that is before Jordan, and it shall be that you shall drink of the brook, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. How do you explain this kind of a scenario? He has prophesied famine. And God appears and says, now because you have prophesied, there will be no rain. There will be no rain. I have to make provision for you. So you shall arise, go by brook chariot, that is where you shall dwell. Drink from the brook. I have commanded ravens to feed you. I want to pray for somebody right now. Ravens can be sent to feed you. Ravens can be sent. That is why I'm saying there is always a way of escape. There is always a way of escape in times of hardship, in times of inflation. And this man called Elijah drank from the brook on a daily basis. And because there was no rain, the brook dried. The brook dried. Listen to this. The ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. Bread and flesh in the evening. That was a balanced diet. And he drank from the brook. 
And because there was no rain in the land, yes, it had, he had to relocate again. And where God sends him now is where now famine is even worse. Famine is even worse. Verse number 7, it came to pass that the brook dried because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon. Dwell there, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. To sustain you. What are you telling us, man of God? There is a way God can sustain you in tough times. God has his own mechanism, spiritual mechanism to make your life better during tough times. To make your life better during tough times. And we are living in the worst of the worst times where people cannot afford anything, where money is failing. The value, the value is reducing. The value of a hundred shilling is reducing against the dollar. The value of a hundred is losing against the pounds. It's only God who can lift you to a level you will not feel the pain of inflation. What you require is in Proverbs 10.22. Listen to this very well. What you need is what is in Proverbs 10.22. The Bible says, The blessing of the Lord. What you need during inflation is what I am calling the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. What does it do? The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and he add no sorrows with it. The blessing makes rich and he adds no sorrows with it. Many of us require what I entitle the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. That is what you require. And what is this? The blessing. The blessing is divine enablement. Supernatural ability to enjoy life when times are tough. What is this blessing? Supernatural ability to attract what others are lacking in life. What is the blessing? It is God's supernatural way to provide when lack is punishing others. When lack is punishing others, there is a divine way of provision. There is a divine way of provision. Listen to this. The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. It makes rich. And he adds no sorrows with it. That is what you should hear. You should be hearing in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, that is what you should be hearing. Yes, that is what you should be hearing. That the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. So if you lack blessing, then there are no riches attached to that. If you don't have the blessing, and how do we provoke how do we provoke the blessing? Blessings don't just come. I want you to read one man here that received the blessings of the Lord in his entire generation. In his entire generation. Yes. I want us to look at Genesis chapter 18. What brought fruitfulness in the life of Abraham? What brought fruitfulness in the life of Abraham? Genesis chapter 18. And the Lord appeared unto him. He appeared to Abraham in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. It was quite hot. When he lifted up his eyes, he looked and lo, 
three men stood by him. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed towards the ground. And he said to them, My lords, if now I have found favor in your sight, in your way, do not pass. I pray you, yes, I pray your servant, please, I beg you, come and eat something in my house. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, wash your feet, rest yourself under the tree. Oh yes, I want you to see what sacrifice can do in your life. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, comfort your hearts, after that you can pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant, and they said, so do as you have said. Abraham began on a journey, yes, to compensate him what was delayed for 25 years, 24 years. He hastened to the tent and to Sarah and said, Make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes upon the heath. Abraham ran to the huts and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man. And he said, Hasten and dress it. Uh -huh. After that, Abraham took butter, he took milk and the calf which he dressed, and set it before and stood by them under the tree. And they did it. And they did it. After they were satisfied. I'm talking about investing. Sowing. I'm talking about breaking this power that has limited your life. God called Abraham when he was 20. He was 75. Later 24 years, he still has no child. The Bible says, immediately they were satisfied, verse 9, and they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, certainly, oh my goodness, I will return certainly to you, or I will certainly return unto you according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah, your wife, will have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent which was behind him. What am I trying to tell you? There are things, until they are released from your life, there are things you cannot have in your life. There are things you must release for things to be released into your life. Tell your wife Sarah, next year like today, she will have a baby. What they did, they invested into the visitors. They invested. That is why I want you to look again, Ecclesiastes 11, message or NLT Bible. The acts of charity yields high returns. The acts of charity, partnering with those that are in need. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1. Be generous. Invest in acts of charity. Charity yields high returns. Charity yields high return. A miracle they waited for 24 years came by an act of charity. Invest in acts of charity. Invest in acts of charity. And that is what I want you to do. Look at this. Send your grain across the sea and in the time profit will flow back to you. Look at that. These are powerful statements. Send your grain across the seas and in time profit will flow back to you. Get to your pay bill number right now. Tell me, man of God, I am desperately in need of a miracle. What sacrifice are you saying? My father, my God, I am sending a sacrifice into this ministry. You have followed this grace. 
That is our pay bill numbers, our account numbers, triple two, triple one, account two double one, twenty four zero seven. Why am I saying this? Those who are joining us before we wind up, we are right here on Moranga Road. Right here on Moranga Road. Yes, that is where our building is. And I want you to take the challenge of saying, man of God, I want to send my 1,000 shillings right now for this building. I am sending my 20,000 shillings for this building until the day we have all the documents in our hands. Partner with Mountain of Deliverance Church, pay bill number 4130469. Account is your name. I want you to tell me every day I want to give a sacrifice to this building. I want to give my sacrifice purposely for this building. This is where we meet every Sunday. This is where every Thursday we are doing our services. And this is one of the best places. We have ample parking in the basement. We have a ground floor. We have a first floor. We have a second floor. And the third floor. Yes, you can visit with us and enjoy the blessings of God in this kind of an environment. I am inviting, inviting you. Come personally and tell me, man of God, I am bringing a hundred thousand shilling. I want to give one million shilling for this building. I want to give ten million for this building. In the name of Jesus, I am coming with my sacrifice. I want to change my life economically. I want to break this financial limitation. I want to break financial limitation. By one act of attending of charity or one act of charity attending to the angels, Abraham's barrenness was broken. The barrenness of Sarah was broken by one act of charity. Just one act of charity, it brought forth Isaac into the scenario. You can also break that financial limitation. My numbers are on the screen Give me a call. Tell me, man of God, I want to bring my sacrifice. I want to give a sacrifice for this building. Yes, I want to give my 1,000, my 10,000, my 100,000 because of this building in Jesus' mighty name. Before we wind up, before we wind up, are you there? You're saying, man of God, I want to be born again. I want to be born again. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Forgive me my sins. As I repent, wash me with the blood that was shed on the cross. Today, I accept Jesus as Lord in my life. Save me now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are now born again. Jesus is Lord over your life. Oh, yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, God bless all of us. God bless you. God bless you, all of us. I'm looking forward to seeing you again and again. Please subscribe to these channels on our Facebook platform. Press the button and like a small bell there so that you may receive a notification when we are live every day. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree the blessings of the Lord that make rich adding no sorrows into your life. You are saying, I want to send my tithes. I want to send my offerings. Our pay bill numbers are always available. Take a shot, a screenshot on that, on our screens and keep it. Tell me, man of God, every time, every day I want to partner. I'll be sending my tithes, my offerings on that line that pay bill is our pay bill in the church and i promise you even the color of your skin will radiate something totally different you can send a transaction on three four three four three four every time you send your sacrifice god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you 
Look forward to seeing you again. This is Dr. Oracle signing out of Oracle Television. This